Hey guys, this is uh, Colburn Clark and um, just reporting in on our uh, Dominion screening. For the promotion, we handed out about two to three hundred flyers uh, beginning two days prior to the event. And um, I'm fairly certain the two non-vegans that stayed to watch the entire film that we gave them a flyer. Um, in addition to that, my friend uh, Elias, he invited um, some of his friends, one of his friends that wasn't vegan. And I believe we had one more person who may or may not have been a student uh, at the university I attend show up. So uh, that makes a total of two to five non-vegans that attended. Um, for the flyering, we had a roughly 1% attendance rate, which sounds bad, but considering we only spent about $15 for the flyers, um, and if a person goes vegan, it saves like thousands of animals. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, we could have done more, but we're most of us volunteering or full-time college students. So it's, you know, we're very busy. Um, and, uh, we kind of like flyered in between classes and things like that when people are on campus. Um, also the day of my friend Elias, he came up with some really sick signs and uh, I was very impressed by that. Uh, that probably cost around, I would imagine, $20 with the paint. So um, overall, fairly low budget. Um, also to note, I um, began a, a student organization on campus called Bears Animal Advocacy. If you're going to university right now, um, you can check with your student life office and they can walk you through how to start an RSO. Um, in addition for being able to reserve the auditorium that we did for free, we paid zero dollars to, to host the screening there, um, and it seats a thousand people. We, uh, we were also able to secure uh, $750 for Entice the Lyrical Vegan, and uh, if you've never heard of Entice, I, I encourage you to check out her channel. Um, she's a uh, black queer vegan rapper, and... Um, her work is, is amazing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of her music. Uh, I think it's based. And uh, yeah, I'll probably do a follow-up video on how to start an RSO, but if you can't, uh, which is a recognized student organization, but if you can't wait until then, um, just go check with your university student life office about the steps and uh, they can help walk you through it. All right, so I'm, I'm Cole, and I'm, I'm very grateful that y'all have come to see this film. Uh, you said you're a horror fan, but you're not. No. no. <laughs> I had to, like, really convince him. Yeah. <laughs> nice. What are some of your favorite horror films? I really like old slasher movies, so like uh, Friday the 13th, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, and of course, I don't know if this really counts, but Scary Movie. Also yeah. <laughs> so, scary Movie is hilarious. Yeah, I, I really like favorites. Scary Movie. Yeah. That's about the same with me. I was, I'm a Friday the 13th fan. I can watch that because it's kind of more funny than it is scary. I really like Jason. And I've seen, I've seen a couple of the Screams. I really like those okay. too. So what, what about those films do y'all do y'all like? Um, I think it's kind of just like... I know they're like based in like 80s summer camp, so they're kind of like uh, just like older kind of, uh, I don't want to say slapstick, but that's what some of them feel like. It's just like a little dramatic. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. <laughs> sure. But, uh, no, I get it. I just like that. I think it's entertaining. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, Friday the 13th. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, the Halloween. Um, I like the. Ch -ch 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 -ch. <laughs> I find uh, a lot of the Jason Whoa. movies to be pretty funny, actually. <laughs> the, way he, the way he chooses to kill people is kind of funny. Sometimes. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Say, for instance, you were in a horror movie, and you were one of the victims. Would you want to get out of that situation? I mean, I think I'd try. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know there's like the, oh, well, that's like a basic answer. Everyone's going to try and get out of a horror situation. Like if there's like just some big beefy dude just 
walk around with a machete trying to kill you, you're going to try and leave. Yeah, right, right. But I mean, I, I try my best. Might not work out. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty scared. I'm running. I'm throwing people behind me to get away. I'm out of there. <laughs> right. Do you think it would make it more horrifying if there was nothing you could do to escape and that you were in that situation, that you're, you were basically doomed? I think a little bit. Yeah. Can I you think, imagine that? Yeah. I mean, it'd be, I think for me, it'd be a little bit of mix. Like, well, if there's nothing I can do, might as well go down swinging. Yeah. <laughs> do what you can. Would you, uh, if you were one of Jason Voorhees' victims, would you want someone to try to help you to rescue you or save you from the situation? I mean, absolutely. I think yeah, me too. Any, like, help out would be incredible <laughs> if you're in that situation. Yeah. I mean, like, I know, like, the cops, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> they usually end up getting killed. Yeah, so, they're, they're just kind of... Which is like, another reason I like horror movies. Come in, they don't help at all. They're like, okay. Yeah. It adds to the suspense, I guess. I yeah. absolutely want to be saved because, like, you can't fight Jason. In fact, someone did try to fight Jason. He took their head off with a swing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Well, guys, thank you so much, and I hope you all enjoy this film. Yeah. Uh, it is kind of difficult to watch, um, but... You know, it is what it is, so thank you. And never are they shown mercy or kindness instead of honor. And never are they shown mercy or kindness instead of honor. Black The captive bolt gun is the most common method of stunning cows, but the smaller guns especially are often ineffective against such large animals, causing only pain and limited mobility, but not unconsciousness. In addition to witnessing the animals before them being stunned, killed, and sometimes even the processing, in most cases, they are also forced to hear their fate from the next room. For cows slaughtered while pregnant, the blood from their unborn calves, known as fetal calf serum or fetal bovine serum, is of great value to the pharmaceutical industry, fetching around $600 per liter. The hides of cows and bobby calves are sent to tanneries to be turned into leather, the majority of which is then exported overseas. There is a common misconception that leather is a byproduct of the meat industry intended to reduce waste. It is far more accurate to say that it is a co-product, sometimes more economically viable than meat, to the point where more and more animals are being killed for their skin than for their flesh. Computer simulation estimates and the observations of rescuers on the wetlands indicate that duck shooters leave at least as many birds wounded and uncaptured as they kill and capture, amounting to many thousands of ducks left to suffer or die from untreated injuries. So now to the part everyone's been waiting for, the results. Um, we had four to five non-vegans attend the film, and for roughly $40 of advertising, I think that's a huge success. If, if one person who was non-vegan attended the film, I would consider that a huge success. Um, so two to three non-vegans watched the entire film. And I say two to three because I, I was behind the, um, the, the projector screen. And when I took the shot of the audience that's in the video, that was towards the end. But um, I'm not sure if Elias' friend stayed the entire time. But the uh, two people uh, who were interviewed did. And um, yeah, so after the, um, the, the screening itself, I, I spoke with the uh, two persons, two people I interviewed beforehand. And um, like uh, just asked them if they planned on going vegan. Um, and one of them uh, said that he plans on adopting a plant-based diet after seeing the film and uh, a little bit of outreach afterwards. Um, 
other notes just going off my hip here, which you're not really supposed to do for YouTube videos or any type of broadcast. You're supposed to write your stuff down first. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, I, I kind of woke up in a, a little bit of a funk today. I, I did watch the entirety of Dominion, which I hadn't done before. And uh, it's a difficult film to watch. I mean, about halfway through, I just got kind of like numb to it. Um, you know, to where, and there are parts that made me angry, um, but mainly I felt numb. And um, uh, one of one of the vegans that attended the screening, she she was crying when it ended, and I don't blame her. You know that that's that's a response. It, it's a heartbreaking film. Uh, Dominion. If you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube for free, and I encourage you to watch it uh, if you're not vegan. And yeah, so you know, I I don't know. I felt a little awkward afterwards um, when I was going to hand out the uh, the materials to join our group and to refer people to Challenge22.com and VeganBootCamp.com, but. Um, you know, that's, that's not her fault. That's not on her. That's on me. Um, and I didn't film the, the interview that I did afterwards when I spoke with those people because I just didn't want it to be, um, you know, to, to put, put a camera in their face after seeing that because they were troopers to, to watch the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, when I did speak to them, one of, one of them said that he plans on adopting a plant-based diet. So that, to me, is a huge success. Um, if you go vegan, you can save the lives of uh, hundreds of animals per year. And, um, you know, I, I think the reduction in cruelty, which is inherent to all processes in animal agriculture, is, uh, is worth being vegan. Um, side note to that, it's not just the vegans that these uh, Dominion film screenings can, can help. Um, it also builds a sense of community with other vegans because one of the vegans that attended the event, she's indicated now that she's more interested in participating in activism over the summer. So um, that's really my biggest... Um, suggestion for the animal rights community is that we need more participation um, I, sanctuaries especially in the south you know there aren't as many vegans here as there are like in, in the pacific northwest the west of the country and the northeast and uh, we are frequently short-handed um, doing cubes of truth doing film screenings um, Sunset Farm Sanctuary with Helen. Hi, Helen. <laughs> She's awesome. And, um, you know, we need, we need help over there with volunteers. So if you're vegan and you're into the, you know, promoting animal rights, I encourage you to just do something on a regular basis. Um, whether that's attending like a Cuba Truth once a month. But make it a part of your life and be consistent with it because we need more participation. That, that's my, my biggest kind of suggestion uh, for the vegan community is that we need more participation and volunteers for animal rights events. And you know, it, it's not always a comfortable process to, to uh, get started again. Um, you know, I, I stopped doing activism for roughly four years. And uh, the first time I went to go hand out some booklets again, I was pretty nervous. Um, you know, it, it's just, and I'd handed out thousands of booklets before. And um, once you, you start doing it, you get more, you know, whether it's bookleting, Cubes of Truth, film screenings, um, you, you get more comfortable with it. And I would just encourage you to find something that you're comfortable doing and to do it for animals and to do it on a consistent basis you know and that's that that would be my recommendation uh, those feelings are temporary and the feelings of discomfort that we have about doing activism is uh, they're very minor discomforts compared to what you know goats and chickens and uh, pigs and cows are going through you know right now today 
And um, yeah, I would just encourage you to find something you can do on a regular basis to help animals and to make it a part of your life and to be consistent with it. But um, anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and staying subscribed to my channel. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. <laughs>